What about detecting uh, maybe uh, through direct imaging or in other ways, megastructures that the this, this civilizations build? You know what's great about megastructures is, first of all, it's fun to say. Who doesn't want to say megastructure? Alien megastructure, right? Every morning I'm looking for an opportunity to say that. Um, so the the, the the Ur example of this is the Dyson Sphere, right? Which is amazing because, you know, it was literally 1960 that this idea came up. Can you explain the Dyson Sphere? Yeah, the Dyson Sphere. So Freeman Dyson, you know, one of the greatest physicists ever, um, who had was very broad-minded and thought about a lot of different things. He recognized that, you know, when a civilization... As civilizations progress, what they're going to need is ever more energy to do ever more, you know, amazing things. And what's the best energy source in a solar system? It's the star, right? So if you surrounded the star with solar collecting machines, sunlight collecting machines, um, and anyway, the, the limit of this would be to actually build a sphere, an actual sphere around your star that had all solar panels on the inside, you could capture every photon the star produced, which is, you know, this insane amount of light. You would have enough power now to do anything, to re-engineer your solar system. Um, so that was a Dyson sphere. It turns out that a Dyson sphere doesn't really work because it's unstable, you know, but a Dyson swarm is, and that's really what he meant. You know, this large collection of large orbiting structures that were able to collect light. Yeah. So he didn't actually mean a rigid right. sphere structure. Yeah. He basically meant a swarm. So yeah. th that, like you said, in the limit basically starts to look people like started to say yeah it was like a sphere and we actually almost thought we might have found one of these um uh back with uh, uh Bajoyan star we saw you know the way we detect planets is through the transit method where the planet passes in front of the star and there's a dip in the starlight it's a little eclipse basically and we know exactly what they should look like and then with this one star there were these really weird transits where like it was like this little dragon's tooth and then there'd be another one and another one and another one and then nothing and then three more and in the paper that was written about this, they suggested they, you know, they went through the list of, oh, it could be comets, could be chunks of a broken up planet, and it could also be an alien megastructure. And of course, the news picked up on this and like everybody's, you know, news feed the next day, alien megastructures discovered. Turns out, sadly, they were not alien megastructures. They were probably gas or dust clouds. Um, but it raised the possibility like, oh, these are observable and people have worked out the details of what they would look like. You don't really need direct imaging. You can do transits, right? They're big enough that when they pass in front of the star, they're going to produce a little blip of light because that's what they're supposed to, right? They're absorbing starlight. So people did have worked out like, well, a square one or a triangular one. But that wouldn't be a Dyson sphere. That would be like one object. That's one object, right. Which is what, you, if it's a swarm, you'd expect like the light to be like blinking in and out as these things pass in front of, you know, if you've got thousands of these, much of the time they'll be blotting out the star. Sometimes they won't be. Right. And so you're going to get an irregular sort of uh, signal, uh, transit signal. Yeah. One you wouldn't expect from a star that doesn't have anything. Exactly. Or just a planet, right? Or a couple of planets. There'd be so many of these that it would be like beep, beep, blip, 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 blip. And that usually doesn't happen in a, uh, in a star system because uh, there's only just a handful of planets. That's exactly what it is. Everything's coagulated. In a stable solar system, you get a handful of planets, you know, five, ten, that, that's it probably, and nothing else. So if now suddenly you see all, lots of these little micro transits, you're telling you there's something else that's big enough to create a transit, but, you know, too many of them, and also within a regular shape, uh, the transit itself, that these are, these could be megastructures. How many people are looking for megastructures now? Well, the main groups looking for megastructures are, again, Jason Wright at Penn State and collaborators. The way they're looking for it, though, is for infrared light. Because, you know, the second law of thermodynamics says, look, if you capture all of this starlight, you're going to warm up the, you know, your thing's going to oh, warm up yeah. and emit in infrared. You're gonna, yeah. It's going to be waste heat, waste heat and waste light mm -hmm. from this. That feels like a louder clearer yeah. way to detect right. it. Right. And that's actually, you know, Dyson, that's actually why Dyson proposed it. He wasn't really proposing it because like he was saying, this is what civilizations are going to do. He proposed it because he was like, oh, we want to start looking for alien civilizations. Here's something that would have a detectable signature. Um, so uh, Jason and company have done, you know, pretty good searches. And recently they, they made news because, you know, they were able to eliminate a lot of places. No, these are not Dyson spheres, but they did have a couple that were like anomalous enough that they're like, well, this is kind of what it would look like. It's not a detection. And they were saying, they would never say it's a detection, but they were like, they were not non-detections. They're potential candidates. Potential candidates, yeah. Love it. We have megastructure candidates. <laughs> that's inspiring. What other megastructures do you think that could be? I mean, that, so that's, Dyson Sphere is about capturing the energy of a star. Yeah. 
Or there could be other... Well, there's uh, something called the Clark Belt, right? So we have a bunch of satellites that are in geosynchronous orbit. Mm -hmm. Nothing naturally is going to end up in geosynchronous orbit, Mm -hmm. right? Geosynchronous orbit is one particular orbit that's really useful if you want to beam things straight down or if you want to put a space elevator up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, there's this idea that if, you know, a civilization becomes, uh, you know, advanced enough that it's really using geosynchronous orbit, that you actually get a belt, something that would actually be detectable from a distance via a transit. Uh, There's been a couple papers written about the possibility of these Clark belts, densely occupied Clark belts mm-hmm. being a, a mega structure. It's not as mega as a Dyson swarm, but it's, you know, kind of planetary scale. You think it's detectable, Clark belt? It could be. I mean, like in our list of techno signatures, it would be down there, but it would be, again, if you had an advanced enough civilization that did enough of this, it would certainly, you'd, you'd have a Clark yeah. belt. And the question is whether or not it's detectable. Yeah, probably Dyson sphere is the, that's the more exciting That's the go-to too. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.